Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody. It's Joe McGee. Welcome back. We are talking about everyday Christian lifestyle, common sense things that maybe you got through through life and you didn't realize you didn't know. Uh, We wrote a book one time. We still have it in print called Eight Things No Kids Should Leave Home Without. And uh, it, I realized, you know, when I started, I started dropping babies like rainwater out of heaven, and uh, they're getting older. And uh, then I started being, I was a school administrator for about 10 years, and I'm working with young people all the time. And I realized some people left home knowing the things they needed to know, and some people left home not knowing this. And so I realized there were just basic things for my kids I was missing, like, eight things no kids leave home without. And number one is a, a vision for your life. You know where you're going when you leave home, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? What's your goal in life? Do you have a, a plan, you know, five-year plan, 10-year plan, you know, uh, how are you going to get there? You know, do you, do you have any gifts? Your, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. Are you good at anything? <laughs> you know, you, everybody's good at something. Do you know what that is? And so, uh, we began to just kind of go through the common sense stuff. So, we came up with this teach called uh, Everyday Christian Life. You know, just common sense stuff you need to do in life. So this is part two of just things that we went down and kind of we have went over with our kids. So this is more of a common sense thing today. Number one is uh, plants and trees. Do you know anything about plants and trees? Uh, do you know how many horticulturists there are? Do you know how many plant country? Have you ever ridden around through town and, and find out how many places there are where you can buy trees and flowers and plants and shrubberies? Uh, it is a huge business. It's not a little business. I mean, every new neighborhood, drive to a new neighborhood, look at all the plants they planted and the trees they planted. It is phenomenal. And so I just realized there was a whole lot more to knowing about plants. Uh, you know, are, are they are they annuals? Are they just seasonal? You know, we buy bulbs and plant them one and we realize they didn't come back up. Well, they were just for that season. They, they weren't year-round. Well, I'm not buying stuff that's not year-round anymore, so kind of I learned the hard way even myself. So... I grew up in the Cherokee National Forest in East Tennessee. We have more varieties of trees than any other national forest in the United States. And so the hardwoods and the, and the, and the greens and the, you know, you could tell where the evergreens were, where they weren't, and the hardwoods are lower down to the bottom and the evergreens are up top. It's where the pines are. And, um, I remember my, uh, grandfather had a 400 acre farm and we'd go turkey hunting every year and you get up, way up high on the mountain where the pines, are still you still got pine needles some so you love you love to hear the wind blow in the fall we go hunting up there turkey hunting a uh, deer hunting and you sit up there and boy you hear that what is the wind whip those pine trees man it's just a beautiful sound it, it just, I, I just loved it so i learned about trees and things and plants and stuff that you touch and you know uh what's poison ivy what's poison oak what should you play with what should you not play with and so you learn. So there's common sense stuff about helping our kids that, guys. You don't touch that. That's poison ivy. That guys don't touch that. That's poison oak. Uh, uh, that, that, that plant right there we can eat. That plant we can't eat. That mushroom we can eat. That mushroom we cannot eat. And so there were just common sense things we learned growing up about plants and trees. Number two, you learned about animals. Because growing up on a farm, uh, we had 12 milk cows. And I learned early, uh, if you go to milk a cow, cows would dry up every now and then. And after about four or five days, you realize cow's not milking anymore. Well, that means that cow is going to get shot and put on the grill. <laughs> and we're going to put that meat in the freezer because we have that cow to milk, and we're not going to feed a cow that's not producing anymore. And so I learned a lot of common sense stuff. We had a we had a, a hen house. We go collect eggs, and we learned. I said, guys, you're going to go out and collect the eggs for early in the morning for breakfast. You know, you didn't go to the grocery store. You went out and collect your own own eggs, the brown eggs. And we had to learn that sometimes, you know, uh, copperheads are crawling in the bottom of that nest on that on that hen because it's warm under there. So make sure that I always say, watch for snakes. The thing I learned every time I went to collect eggs, watch for snakes. I thought, well, good Lord, where, where are they at? Well, sometimes they'll get under that hen, they'll get in, in a nice warm place. So make sure you, when you stick your hand under there, you reach for an egg. Uh, I learned when we'd pick us uh, 
uh, blackberries and uh, on the side of the road and big blackberry vines. Uh, every time we go pick blackberries, watch for snakes. <laughs> My whole life, I was watching for snakes. I used to go trout fishing all the time in the summertime. Watch for snakes. So I, I learned early. I was never afraid, but I didn't have enough sense to realize there's stuff here that's really good and stuff you need to keep your eye out for them. So watch. And so we learned about the animals. We had chickens. We had hens. We had turkeys. Uh, we had goats, believe it or not. We always had pigs. We had hogs, you know. And so every year, you know, it's time to come to butcher the hogs. And so because they grew up in the country, I knew what we did. Well, we're going to get that big old hog. We're going to put it in the back of the pickup truck. And uh, uncle's going to get in one corner, hogs on the other. And you're going to shoot that hog right in the head. And you're going to shoot that hog. And then what you're going to do, you're going to drag them out. And we've been boiling water since early that morning. The kids had to gather the wood, build a hot fire, those big old pots, you know, that you build a fire forever. And, and get that water boiling, and so you get that hog out, and you lay him down on that big pallet after you've shot him. And first thing you do, you, you cut the throat, and then all of a sudden you got to shave the hair off of him. So you grab a pot, and you grab a boiling water, and you pour that boiling water over that hog. Then the kids, we get those real sharp knives, hold one end with our one thumb, one of the other, and we'd shave the hair off that hog. And you had to make sure you got it shaved off real good, or grandpa's going to yell at you about six months from now, who killed this hog? You know, Make sure you get the hair shaved off that hog. Well, then you'd hang that hog up in a tree, and we'd have the big uh, uh, block and tackle. We'd hang it up in a big old tree in the front yard, and we would saw that hog from one end down to the other. And we'd cut him in half, and that's where you found out that, oh, that's where the pork chops are, and that's where the sausage comes from. That's where we make the hog head cheese from. We'd cut the head off, and we'd put it in the sink in the big slaughterhouse we'd built, uh, and we'd let it soak for two or three days, and... Then we make that hogshead cheese and grind it up, and everybody eat that at Christmas time. I never knew what it was. Uh, we had pork brains and eggs for breakfast, and I learned where that came from. There was so much that people would think, well, that's gross, and that's it. Well, if you didn't grow up on a farm. If you grew up on a farm, you knew where all that stuff came from, you know? When we had beef, every time you eat some steak, I knew where that cow came from. I knew where it was. You know, we fed it. We might pet it, but eventually we're going to shoot it, and it's going to the slaughterhouse. That's where we get our meat from. So there are things we learned. Then we learned about uh, kind of safety and emergency. So we always made sure when you live in the country, numbers by every phone, we'd have the phone on the wall. Beside that phone would be a, a pad, and we'd usually have it laminated or something. What is that? Well, that's the 911 merchant number. That's the local hospital number. That's the local fire fire hall number. Because there wasn't a fire station right next to our house. We're in the country. But we did have people where you could call, and maybe and we knew where the local hospital was, how many miles away. We knew our doctor's name and number. We had that up there. Hey, Doc, we're having this situation. We may have to run in. We've done that before because you live in the country. Somebody needs stitches. Somebody gets something. You have to go in and see something. So we had phone numbers. Buy the phone in case of an emergency. Don't have an emergency have to say, Ooh, who to call, where to call. No, everybody was trained. That phone number is right next to that phone. Call that number. Here's a great one. We talked about automobile um, uh, care. Uh, I remember one time uh, <laughs> um, I had a uh, um, kind of learned basic mechanic skills. I remember one of my daughters was there in college, uh, real smart, made straight A's. Um, we had a Aerostar van and, um, and had about 300,000 miles on it. We'd, we'd taken good care of it, changed oil on a regular basis. So my daughter's driving a 10. I noticed it was losing water every now and then. So about every three or four days, you have to add some water to it. You know, about every month, you're going to have to add another quart, quart and a half of oil. And so my daughter's a 10, and I told her, I said, you may have to add water, so keep an eye on that on the heat gauge. If it starts to get hotter, it needs water. The water's in the back. Keep two jugs of water. And so they were in town, taking two, two of my daughters to get some stuff done on a Saturday. And the water gauge, the heat started going up, so I need to put some water in. So I always told them, you know, take it real slow and get off the side of the road, you know, do it real safe. And, and you pop that cap and just pour about, you know, pour about, you know, a gallon of water if it needs water. Well, when she did that, uh, she knew how to do that. Well, then one day there was this oil. The oil light came on. And so she stopped the car and put some oil in it, pulled it in a little gas station. She raised the hood, and the caps, um, you know, the, everything's kind of European now. So used to, all caps said oil, O-I-L. It said oil. Water, it said water. Today they have they have little pictures. It's, you don't know if that a water picture or is that an oil picture. I don't know what that is. Speak English to me. I don't know what it is. And so what she did, she poured a quart of oil into the radiator. Well, when she did, the thing thickened up on her, and uh, we burnt the engine up. Well, that was a two thousand dollar mistake that day, and I realized that was not my daughter's fault. I realized I had never had my daughter raise that engine on that particular vehicle. Okay, honey, this is not my old six cylinder truck that I had for years. This is a newer vehicle. It's made different. 
Half of it's made in Europe. This is a European design, you know. That it's like it doesn't say oil. It's got a different cab. So I had to. I hadn't taught her, and so it was my fault, you know, that we lost the engine. So I eventually had to get another vehicle. But who did that? Well, I should have covered basic maintenance on every vehicle. If you get a car, take your kids out, raise the hood. Hey guys, here's where the water goes. Here's where the oil goes. Here's where you check how much oil you got or what do you need more or not. You know, here's where the uh, the spark plugs go. Just do the basics. Just cover basic maintenance. It'll make a huge difference. Number five, we're talking about just getting order, organizing your life. Uh, one of the greatest challenges I ever saw as a school administrator, kids that did poorly in school weren't dumb. They were disorganized. Oh, is that test today? Oh, is that book report due today? And what they were, they were just living in their own world. I said, well, guys, we've been coming for the last two weeks that today was the test. Well, can we wait and have the test on Monday? No. I've told you for two weeks, every day it's been on the blackboard, the test is today. And some people just wouldn't get it up. They wouldn't get their life in order. So you need to get your life in order. So get you a day planner, a day timer, get something. Uh, lay your lay your calendar out for the year. When are you going on vacation? When is school break? You know, whether you're a student or whether you're an adult, you know, uh, when's the plant shut down for the summer? I mean, what what's going on? And get it on the calendar. When's your anniversary? When's your birthday? When's your wife's birthday? Put it on the calendar because you're going to get busy and forget, and that's going to cause you a heartache. So early in life, learn to carry a calendar with you. You can do them. You can buy them real small. Every every uh, office supply place got one that'll fit in your back pocket. What is that? Well, that's my yearly calendar. That's what's happening this year. If something comes up, oh, uncle's and us his birthday party next Thursday. Write it on the calendar or you're going to forget it because everybody's busy. You're running everywhere. Number six, get medical knowledge. You know, we call this basic first aid. So in our home, we have the same basic first aid kit. We, we've got uh, uh, we got Band-Aids, iodine, you got wraps. Uh, we have things, you know, every, you, you name it, it's in there. Well, it's not just in there. We've taught every person in the house, here's what this is. Here's what you use it for. And you need to make a quick decision sometime. I remember somebody breaks a bone, somebody gets cut. What do you do? Well, how far is the hospital? What's going on? What can you do in the meantime? Where's the number you call? Don't sit around and waste half a day trying to figure something out. We were uh, uh, with some families that lived up on the mountain behind us one time, and we were up swimming in a pool beautiful home built up on the side of a mountain and all of a sudden a copperhead and because it's the it's a mountain there's snakes up there a copperhead had been in the rocks right next to the, where the pool was and one of them popped out and bit one of the children on the ankle well you know we we don't know what to do we were, we were 30 miles from the hospital so we, i had enough says no got to get the snake and kill it don't let that snake get away so man we got to grab a shovel there and i chased it down we got the snake we killed it we rushed her to the emergency room in town I'm trying to stay calm. Everybody stay calm. Is it poison? We don't know. It looks like a copperhead, but I don't know. I grew up in the country, but I don't know. Some snakes look the same. So we went in there, and, and so we get her in there. You're starting to do the anti venom thing. Well, I think it may be a copperhead. So I remember I called my scout master, and he was real sharp. I said, come down here and find out if this is a copperhead or not. So we'd had the snake in the trunk. So she's in the emergency room, and I see you. They're starting to do the IV. And he comes in. I raised the hood. He said, no, that's not a copperhead. It's just a brown snake. Oh, man. So we run into the merchants. No, it is not a copperhead. It is not a poison snake. Well, they just started to give the anti-venom, and they, it almost started to have a bad effect on it, and they stopped. Because we're trying to tell them we think a copperhead's bitter, a copperhead's bitter. It was not a copperhead. And so sometimes you need to have some experts. You need to have some phone numbers or somebody you can call. Here's what we're dealing with. Is this important? Yes or no? <laughs> the Bible says in the mouth two or three witnesses, the thing is established. Um, we need to talk about uh, consumer and shopping skills. Uh, you know, you, so you go into any drugstore, any grocery store, if you go to the grocery store in particular, all the fresh foods on the outside, fresh foods on the outside. Middle aisles of canned food. That's not the fresh food. So if you're going to eat good, you're eating off the outside where the, everything's refrigerated. It's fresh. It's fruit. It's vegetables. It's fresh food. The more fresh food you eat, the healthier you're going to be and the longer you're going to live. So you kind of learn some basic shopper skills. And uh, people say, well, it's cheaper here. I don't know. Well, let's look at Is that a 16-ounce can? Is that a 30-ounce can? Is that an 8-ounce can? What is that? And so you got to learn how to shop. It might not be cheaper. Plus, you might not need 20 gallons of it. You know, I don't need three gallons of oil. I just need a quart, you know, to cook with. There's just different ways of doing it. Um, we used to have career day in high school. Uh, number eight is just business and free enterprise sense, how to start a business, carry on a business. So I remember used to, when I was in school, we'd have career day, and we'd have uh, we'd have four basic guys. You have the Marine, the Navy, the Army, maybe. Then you'd have a local businessman. 
Well, I'm in high school. And I don't have a clue what I want to do yet. And I remember I thought, man, I sure wish that I had more opportunity that somebody else had come to my school. Uh, it would have been great to have heard from a carpenter or a mechanic or a plumber because uh, most of us were blue-collar people. And so I think, well, I'm not going to be a business person. I'm just going to be a regular guy. And so, But we had nobody to point the future to us. So I tell people, you've got a young child, expose them to a lot of stuff. Have them go business and businesses and make sure your school brings people in. Number nine is uh, money. Manage your money. Real simple. Every kid needs an allowance. I don't care if it's 50 cents a week, $5 a week, $50. I don't care what it is. Every kid needs to learn how to manage their own money early. If they don't have their own money, by the time they get their money and they're 18, they don't know how to manage it. That's why most of our young people are in debt. They didn't learn how to manage it early. you got to learn how to manage, save, and spend your money. The Bible calls it stewardship. Number 10 is critical thinking skills. We call this problem solving. Jesus said, blessed are the problem solvers. They should be called the children of God. you got to learn how to solve problems when you leave home because you're going to run into them. Things you've never seen, things you've never heard about. You need to know how to research. You need to know how to pick up a phone and call somebody. Hey, Bill, I'm going through this. Have you ever seen this before? Hey, Frank, I'm dealing with this. Have you ever dealt with this before? Hey, my lights are flickering. Do you know what that could be? Learn to ask questions. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Critical thinking skills is going to involve in problem solving, but it's also going to involve in asking questions. Number 11 is prepare for the future. I tell every kid, every one of my kids, I want you to sit down. I started when they turned 13. Write me a five-year plan. In five years, where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? How much money do you want to be making? You plan to be in college? What do you plan to do? If you don't sit down with your kid and help them start planning their future, they'll react to whatever's happening today. They'll never plan. They're just, they're, they're just putting out fires the rest of their life. Learn how to plan for your future. Write a five, 10, and 20-year plan for your life, you know? Just kind of like, where would you think you'd like to be? Five steps to get there, whatever it is. Then number 12, learn how to be a good citizen. One of the things we taught our kids, we register to vote. As soon as you're of age, we're going to register you to vote. You're going to show where the voting place is. If you move, you're going to have to change voting places. Uh, read a daily newspaper. You don't have to read all the articles. Just read the headlines. Take your daily paper and just read the big, heavy black print. If you just read that heavy black print on every page, you have a good idea what's going on in the world. Uh, I said, read the editorial page. There's only going to be about three basic things on the editorial page. What's going on in the world? This is going on in Afghanistan. This is going on in our federal government right now. This is going on in the White House. Then you know not only how to act, how to vote, but you know how to pray. So have some idea what's going on. Stay stay uh, up on what's going on. Be a good citizen. Uh, be effective. Be the salt and light God calls you to be. Guys, it's been a great common sense day. I appreciate you listening. God bless you. Talk to you later. Hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, joemcgeeministries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.